Yes, yes, Massive from Crew back once again with another video and today I'm going to show you a couple of little bits and pieces that I bought uh, for my Akai, etc. Connecting my Akai up to my Easy Zip SCSI drive. Don't forget the new Merc on www.samploys.co.uk. Amen. Snapbacks, embroidered, looking cool. Bringing that all the Massive inside. I've got a parallel port so I can connect up my iAmiga zip drive. I've got... A new floppy drive for my Atari, a USB to parallel cable, which is pretty interesting. I'm gonna try connecting up my zip drive to it to see if it works. Some new floppies for writing onto disc. And something weird happened to me today. I connected up my SCSI port on my Akai and I switched it on and it had a just a just a straight green light and I got kind of worried because it wasn't booting up. And then I looked inside and it looks like some of the hot glue that I've used has come apart. So I can only assume that it's got a bit warm and this is sort of uh, fell apart. Uh, but a good thing is, is that I've actually bought one of those GoTech thingy majiggies to put here. And I've also bought a hot swap disc. So I might just connect that here and maybe just see if I can mount it outside rather than inside. Because when you run out of these compact flash discs, uh, you kind of run in trouble. And the good news is I've got the SCSI cable. So it says here SS01. D25 mil to Centronics mil one meter. So I'm not even sure if that's SCSI to be honest. I think they advertised it as SCSI. You tell me if you guys know anything about that. For the easy SCSI drive, um, and I've basically run this out. I'm gonna run this out of here, run it into the Akai, and run the other end out into the computer. But I think, I suspect there's some sort of SCSI termination palawa. So I'm gonna have to run some trials out to see if I first of all get this working with this, and then maybe disconnect my compact flash reader first uh, and then take it from there guys as you can see there is wires everywhere and I will be tidying up the wires once I get all this crap sorted out get it all strung up properly I will be um, resolving this so the plan today is to connect the computer to the easy zip drive and from the easy zip drive to the Akai okay local SCSI ID6 and the SCSI drive is on two uh, but it's still not picking up my iAmiga. Now, I suspect, because I was looking at the cable, and I was looking at the cable wondering if that cable was actually a SCSI cable that I bought off of eBay. Sometimes people sell you some, some crap, and uh, it's not actually, you know, what it says on the tin. So I'm just suspect that that SCSI cable is not actually SCSI cable. Uh, I think it might be a parallel cable. Um, now comment down below if you know if a parallel cable actually connects to a SCSI port which is probably what's going on it's got like a 50 pin to a 25 pin uh, so that might be the issue um, and I'll be screwing if it is because you have to be very careful with SCSI because you can blow a fuse uh, so I'm going to try swap, swap around the ports on this gadget here now and see if that works so guys my question is can you connect a USB to parallel port to a parallel iAmiga zip drive. Right, this is not the actual one, it's over here. Right, and use that with Translator 6. We're about to find out. Guys, as you can see here, I've made a little hot glue tower. I've hot glued my Cycrest and my two iAmigas. I've got one which is scuzzy and one which is parallel. I ended up with the two because I wasn't sure uh, if one would work with the other. So if you've been watching my videos, you know uh, that I've been trying to archive all my discs. But this just holds it a little bit more sturdy. Uh, I don't totally trust it because uh, it is hot glue after all. And it is kind of like a stronger tack than blue tack. You can use it for sort of light sticking. But you got to be careful. It does get hot, so it can damage circuitry. Um, I've re sort of stuck my uh, flash compact flash reader uh, with a bit more hot glue now because I, I was running low on it when I actually did this so probably that's something to do with it and now I've got to get my hot swap I really do need to get another way of saving the samples onto compact flash which would be cool so guys the question was can you use a USB to parallel port to connect your iAmiga zip drive and the answer is no, tried it on Windows 7, it flopped, didn't recognize it. Uh, this says fully compliant with USB 1.1 and 2.0 and IIEEE 128 specification. Bidirectional transfer over parallel port, support up to 12 megabyte data per uh, rate. Uh, Windows compatible, plug and play, hot swappable. Boo, not working with. Oh, it's Mac OS X compatible interesting i'll try this with a mac and see what happens okay guys silly me so it does actually say usb to db25 parallel printer 
adapter cable. So this is to connect an old parallel printer to a USB port. So no good. Next step is to install my parallel PCI adapter, which I'm pretty sure should work. <laughs> Okay, that's it. I've just replaced my drive, courtesy of stfreaks.co.uk. Uh, it was pretty easy to do as this um, case has already been bored out, so uh, it's pretty easy to, to do. As you can see, it's still quite dusty inside, uh, but I've just done the test and it seems to be loading the discs okay. So, two things, guys I've got my GoTech floppy emulator, and it looks like it's got a little bit of a display here, although I'm not sure if it is or not probably connect it up see what it looks like um, I'm thinking about installing that and I can see uh, that there's sort of four screws here that need to be removed um, I'm actually tempted to try and install it uh, and uh, see what it's all about just for the love of uh, trying to work out the best way forward for me I've got one here so I may test that out shortly the idea that I've got in mind is to cut a nice straight cut on my Akai I probably won't need to go back that far but maybe go back from about here to here cut that out and then mount that you see like how that's sitting on here mount it so that it just sticks up like you know like one of those mad looking cars where the engine pops up a little bit out of the lid to let the uh, air hold the manifold or whatever it is I think that's a good idea what do you think guys? So that's it peeps, as you can see here, SCSI ID5 is the internal drive and SCSI ID2 is the Microtech. Now I've just got to find a way to kind of mount this all up, maybe remodel a bit of Perspex, I don't know, 3D printed something, hmm, interesting. So guys, as you can see, I'm still testing, I've got my HXC floppy disk emulator hooked up and also my Microtech hooked up and down there the card reader that I installed uh, and all seems to be working quite well um, I've still yet to find out how to create an image for this on the computer or maybe use try to find out how to use Omniflop to save the image and then I could save it on this little USB stick or my all my floppy drives and find a way to load them in here but this is, uh, I'm not actually sure how it works because this sees the, it sees this as HXC disks. So actually, that's just giving me an idea. I'm gonna try something. So what I'm gonna do folks is just categorize all my disks. So that's it peeps. <coughs> These are trying to sabotage my video, <coughs> but that's it peeps. It was a late night, ignoring, ignoring, ignoring. <coughs> Paris. No, Paris, Paris. that's I'm disgusting. Get out of it. Like you in a right, so that's it, peeps. Take care. God bless. Why do you Peace. Do that?